Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, what I would do today is I'll uh, take you through this little journey uh, which I had and why I decided to become a photographer and why I chose to sort of do what I'm doing. This all began 10, 12 years back and these were times uh, which were difficult, which were very difficult. Uh, why they were difficult and what they were is another talk for some other day. But um, I remember quite well that all of a sudden it became like a mad obsession, you know, photography and living with photographs, uh, uh, looking at photographs. And suddenly I realized after a couple of years that uh, it was only photography that I was doing. There was nothing else. I was shifting colleges, I was shifting uh, cities different houses, trying to settle down with life because it was very chaotic, it was important to calm down. And when people used to ask me that, uh, what do you do? I had no answer because I, I was doing nothing. So photography at some level gave some sort of meaning, you know, some sort of sense to everything and to this nothingness. So I started saying that I'm a photographer and people started believing. I could enter spaces which I would otherwise wouldn't have entered. And uh, back in those days it was very difficult to really do what you wanted to do because in order to be a photographer you had to be a photojournalist, a commercial photographer, mm, do weddings, or there were different various kinds of things that other people were doing and I found them uh, very boring and that's not what I wanted to do. Mm, there were trouble in the family that what this guy is going to do. But they were happy that I was doing something. We had to travel from one city to the other in order to see a proper show because the city never had these things. So I remember that uh, there was this suffocation. It was, uh, it was very lonely to be a photographer. Uh, you couldn't make people uh, understand what you are doing. And photography is such a medium where it only uh, interests photographers and that was another concern that what am I going to talk about as a photographer in a TED talk because the normal people they don't really care about photography which is absolutely fine but this is how it is and that was one point in time when I was looking at work because internet had just come not like this generation when they had internet from class 5, 6. We had an internet at a sort of time when we were giving class 10, 11, 12 or something like that. So we were exposed to different kinds of photography. So I knew that, you know, I mean, I'm not getting anywhere, like four or five months of hard work is not getting us anywhere. Uh, trial and error, you do this for some time and then you do something else. And then I, uh, I mean, I saw Antoine Diagata's work, a uh, French photographer who sort of changed my whole idea of photography. Uh, and uh, just before that, uh, I really loved Saurabh Gura's work from India, the only photographer I looked up to back then and I still do now. Uh, and I always thought that, you know, like how are they doing it, etc. So I went for this workshop in Angkor called Angkor Photo Festival. And I did this workshop with Antoine. It was very intense. And I remember shooting like mad, you know. Whatever I had 
kept within me for so long like this last two three years of frustration uh, this was uh, the work which I had done in Cambodia called Khmer Din and uh, it was around four five days of shooting but uh, what came as a byproduct of this mad shooting was uh, I could do what I was looking forward to you know uh, I remember when Antoine was giving this uh, feedback sessions at the end of uh, these workshops he would he would speak to me after he had spoken to everyone and on the last day um, when he was talking to everyone else uh, I was just crying you know so photography then I realized was just not a career or a passion or a hobby it was like uh, life and death and uh, only few photographers can understand this it's very difficult otherwise then this beautiful photographer who was there I mean uh, she helped me make a book and uh, I knew that I had to do something with the work and so I tried and I made a book with this just made 200 little uh, copies mm. It had this uh, huge poster inside it folded. There was this envelope with a little bit of prints inside. There was a text sheet. And I was very excited about it. I didn't wait for a publisher to look at this work or I was not waiting for anyone else. It felt like doing something and I did it. And back in those days, it was not as easy to do a self-published book or either in terms of designing it or in terms of uh, taking it out to people etc etc so those were exciting times and uh, I mean my my journey into the world of photography as it started it had a lot to do with the and that was one point in time when I was completely obsessed with the Japanese uh, provoked generation uh, photographers like Dado Moriyama, Kizo Kitajima there's an army of photographers and I kept on thinking that you know like uh, I want to make works like this and uh, after I finished this work I got very bored again so uh, and this this is what has happened uh, to me all the time that I do something uh, with a lot of obsession and then uh, that obsession is lifted and then I want to do something else and uh, but one thing you know, which happened in Angkor was uh, it gave me some sort of an idea of uh, what kind of a photographer I wanted to be. You know, what kind of work I wanted to engage with, what kind of people I wanted to work with. And back then, uh, which still holds in Calcutta, you know, and the rest of the country, is uh, we don't have galleries, we don't have museums, we don't have photo book publishers, we don't have curators. There is no, there's no secondary market, there's nothing as far as photography is concerned. Uh, and I'll go back to the same thing that you have to either be a photojournalist or a commercial photographer or a fashion photographer and uh, things like that. So it was difficult for us. Uh, but uh, as I said, that more than a career, more than anything else, uh, my only reason to come to photography was uh, because I wanted to do this and I wanted to spend my whole life in photography is what I thought back then. I don't know what I'm going to think maybe tomorrow or the day after. But uh, yeah, so after, after Angkor, after uh, meeting all these great photographers I wanted to meet, a lot of these ch things changed. And I figure that everybody is on the same journey. Everybody has a similar kind of problems. So this is what, this was the book. Uh, came in this little slipcase sort of cover with uh, a tech sheet and other things. So I know it's not a great book. I know where this book is wrong, etc. But this is very special. Maybe 
you know, it'll, I'll do something with it after many years, maybe of 10 years or something. But uh, I, I make a lot of mistakes and like photography, like, like doing your own shows, using public space, everything. This book also taught me how to make a book. So our whole, like my entire generation, like the generation I belong to, all of us have learned through this trial and error because we never had colleges, we never had schools, we never had uh, people to tell us that what is good, what is bad, what you should do, what you should not do. So for us it was more of searching for something all along. And that's the reason that many of us, all our works are different and uh, we still are people who probably are not so obsessed with the arrival which I keep on telling people that uh, photography in general is for me is more about the journey when someone is too obsessed with the arrival then there's nothing from the journey that you can extract and uh, whatever there is is what you have so after Angkor, uh, after Khmer Din, we uh, then I went to this black hole again of not understanding anything, and uh, I was in this weird spot all over again. That what should I do now? Uh, I had after that I had tuberculosis. I remember, and uh, I was in the hospital, and somehow there was this gallery in Delhi uh, where I had an exhibition, and I had met this ambassador from Poland who was there and she really liked uh, uh, the kind of work I was doing. So she told me back then that, uh, you know, are you interested to go to Poland for this little artist residency that they are doing? So I said yes, but why I'm bringing up the hospital and all that is that I was lying in my hospital bed and this woman had sent me, it's very kind of her, to send me this music uh, like DVDs of Thomas Tanko and I was listening to it and it did something to me. Uh, so, I mean, uh, inspired by Kishlowski and his seminal work, Three Colors Trilogy, uh, and some stories that I heard from people from my generation, my friends, etc., who grew up listening to uh, Soviet era short stories. I did this work in Poland in uh, the winter of 2013 and can you just run the thing? So this was uh, me making some sense of color work for the first time and how uh, uh, I was, as I said, I was bored with black and white photography and you know Poland for me was about uh, the solidarity movement and uh, how the communist regime was thrown over by a very legitimate people's movement and this is something uh, which was also happening here just happened here like uh, the so-called leftist forces in Bengal were thrown out after a long time uh, so it was easy for me to bridge this you know it, this romantic idea of the winter in Poland, etc, uh, etc. Et and we uh, in Calcutta, uh, we were a byproduct of the generation who had just seen on the ground Shingur happening, the uh, communist government, the so-called communist government here killing people in on the ground. Uh, and whatever happened after that, we have all witnessed that. So my idea was to look at the color red and how uh, it changed you know, from the symbol of uh, the solidarity movement, etc., to what it is now, because capitalism has taken over in Poland, this, that, the other. Then I came back again and I went to Jharia in uh, uh, this coal mines where I was uh, fixing for uh, these two French filmmakers, Tian Duana Shampasak and Jean Dubrel. You can keep it going. Thanks. So, Tian uh, and Jean were making this film in Jaria 
uh, on the fire, uh, there was an underground fire which was burning since a very, very long time. And <clears throat> I was just shooting on my phone. And slowly, steadily, I realized that I might have something. And later, like last year, Getty and Instagram have been very kind to offer me a grant uh, for this work. And this was the time when mobile phones and phone cameras and phone images were getting popular and people were using it uh, like never before. So uh, things were getting more easy. You know, the bridge that was there when I, when I had started photography, that you had to depend on a magazine or a print uh, newspaper or a gallery, etc. These were vanishing and we could do it with the social media, with Instagram, this, that, the other. And there is another very significant thing which I understood uh, from doing this work was the power of the mobile phones what, and what it could do. If you take into consideration the entire history of photography, the conceptual photography or the post photography that we talk about is completely dependent on the idea that we are just making old images and we can't make new images. But the phone for the first time in this like 200 years can give you something very radical. So for me, mobile phone photography, there's nothing called mobile phone photography anyways. I mean, if you make images with a mobile, maybe there is a very slight chance that you can get something which you, uh, you don't know. So, and I, I, and I keep telling this, that if you give a phone to a Picasso who is 16, 17 year old boy or a girl, you would know what a mobile phone can do. So, all of us know like about the work in Jharia, uh, there is so much to talk about. I mean, you know, like two, three minutes is such a little time to talk about. But yeah, it's very surreal. I mean, there's an underground fire which has been burning in Jharia for a very, very long time. And nobody has been able to stop it and nobody wants to stop it also. Because all institutions, uh, agencies, the government, everyone has failed, you know, from, from the Maharaja who was controlling the fire. Uh, he failed and then uh, the British Raj, they failed when they took control, then the government of India failed, then the multinational companies are also going to fail, the labor, uh, the trade union movements there, it failed, the mafia failed. So this is a story of failure of years and years, so this has been going on since centuries. So. What I wanted to do is I wanted to make a sense of this sort of post-apocalyptic kind of world where uh, I wanted to see how the world looks like when you have extracted everything from it. You know, so this is what it is and uh, uh, hopefully there will be a book on the Jaria work very soon, it's supposed to happen uh, end of next month etc. Might get a little pushed. So, and now, as I said, that, you know, I keep moving and, you know, it, I get very bored doing the same thing over and over again. So, yeah, so, uh, I just want to run you through some little work that I had done, which is like very close to me. It's with no beginning and no end. There's a lot of pressure on photographers to, uh, there's a lot of pressure on photographers to sort of do work, you know, like to make bodies of work. I didn't come to photography to make a career in photography. So more than building up bodies of work and creating, I don't know what, for me these images make a lot of sense to me because whatever I can't say loudly to people is something I'd rather hide it in images. You know, these are images, these, these are like very precious moments in my life uh, and uh, these are little secrets. and. I have always been more interested in mystery than truth. I have been more interested in the journey uh, more than the destination. I have been more interested in making relationships which are more sort of honest and open rather than making relationships to debate as Suha said. So, this is my only way out. I mean, there's no other way I can live. Uh, it's very difficult to make sense of what I'm saying. 
and that's the reason I have chosen photography to do it. Uh, so, coming back to Instagram again, I mean, you know, these little places give us this avenue to keep doing what you want and not really care about the the market or uh, the history of photography or how to make a career out of photography, so on and so forth. This struggle will definitely go on, but at the same time, more, more than anything else, it's very important to be happy. It's, it's very important to make sense of who you are, uh, maybe who I am. Thanks, thanks a lot.